Hello YouTube, I hope you're having a fantastic day. In today's video, we're talking about the Word 2019 exam, and we're looking at the second subdomain called Insert and Format Text, Paragraphs, and Sections. Overall, this accommodates for 20 to 25% of the overall exam. I'll go to throw up a graphic so you can look at this domain with me. In today's video, we're going to look at the subdomains Insert Text and Paragraphs, Format Text and Paragraphs, and Create and Configure Document Sections. Let's go ahead and jump into Word. We're talking about the Word 2019 exam, and we're looking at the second subdomain called Insert and Format Text, Paragraphs, and Sections. Overall, this accommodates for 20 to 25% of the overall exam. We're looking at the first subdomain called Insert Text and Paragraphs. This subdomain tells us that we should be able to find and replace text. This is going to be different from what we saw in the first domain for Find. We're actually going to find text and replace it using the Replace feature. We're on the Home tab, we're in the Editing group, and what we want to do is choose Replace. You can also use the keyboard shortcut Control H to access this window. In the top section, you want to type what you're looking for. For this, we're going to type in Chapter 2. And our replace with what, we're going to put Part 2. Now before I click anything here, I'm actually going to show you the More button. This is important because in this section, there's a lot of extra features that you could be asked to do, such as looking for wildcards. You can do the prefix and suffix. But down here, you have the option of checking for formatting issues. And this special character section is important as well. So if I said to replace all chapter two with the M dash, I could select this and notice it went ahead and it added that special character set. And if I click replace, it will add part two and that special character set. We'll go ahead and delete that because we just want part two. As I'm looking to replace text, I can do individual instances or I can replace them all at the same time. For this, we're gonna replace all. And notice that two changes were made and we can already see that here at the top. We'll click OK. Let's scroll back up and we can close out of this. The next thing that we're told that we should be able to do is to insert symbols and special characters. So I have my cursor here at the bottom of the chapters that are listed in this book and we're going to go to the insert tab and where we want to go is the symbols. If I click the symbol drop down, I have some that are here. These are the more common ones used. If I click more symbols, I have this vast library of different symbols that I can use. So if I look in this section here, I don't really know what I'm looking at, but if I select this right here, notice that it has a character code. And each one has its own character code. So if I said to look in this section for character code 3019, this is what would pull up. When you found what you selected, you want to click insert, but you only want to do it once. Because if you click it more than once, it'll keep inserting that in the document. You should also look at the special characters because there's some in here that you might want to use. If I wanted to add the copyright, I could just select it and then click insert and that's now put in the document. We're on the second subdomain, format text and paragraphs. We're told that we should be able to apply text effects. I'm going to go ahead and highlight this text Peter Pan. We're on the home tab, we're in the font group. You should be familiar with the font type and the font size and adjusting up and down here. You have bold, italics, underlined. Our underline has a few options that we could choose. You can strike through text. You can do the subscript or you can do superscript. But where you might not have played around with is in this area right here. If we look here, we have the typography section. We can apply some styles here or you can start creating your own through outline, shadow, reflection, and glow. You also have the ability to highlight words. So if I said to add the turquoise highlight to the text, you could. You most likely have changed the font color. Let's go ahead and apply this right here, the fill blue accent color one. And let's go ahead and change our case to all lowercase. And I'm gonna go ahead and increase this font size so we can see it a little bit better. Let's say I liked what I've done here and I wanna apply this to multiple parts within this document. One of my favorite features in Microsoft is called the Format Painter. That's on the Home tab in the Clipboard group. And if I click Format Painter here, if you look carefully, you can see that my cursor's changed just a little bit with the eye beam with the paintbrush. 
And that means that Word has loaded my cursor with this formatting that I've applied to Peter Pan. And so if I click and drag this to the third line, notice I went ahead and applied all of that formatting to that line. If I double click on the Format Painter, it allows me to keep clicking in areas. So maybe I want contents to be that way and this chapter and group that I can just keep clicking and the Format Painter will apply that formatting to the words that I click. When I'm done with that, if I hit the escape key, it'll cancel that loaded formatting and I can click around in Word like normal. This subdomain tells us that we should be able to set line and paragraph spacing and indentation. Let me go ahead and scroll down in my document to put my cursor in this first paragraph under chapter one. The first thing we'll look at is line spacing. In the paragraph group, I can change the line and paragraph spacing here. I can also do that on the layout tab and in the paragraph group, I can change some of the before and after spacing as well as the indentation of the document. If I go back to the home tab, I can also increase and decrease indent from here. And on both tabs, you have the paragraph dialog launcher box, which brings open this window. And in this window, there's a lot of features that you can use to apply to a document. For example, we can adjust our left and right indent here but we also have the option of adding a special indent. So maybe I wanted to add a first line indent and I can change this to 0.5. Or in the spacing section, I can change my before and after spacing. Or to the right, maybe I wanna apply exactly 12 point. I could do that as well. I also have the line and page break section. And I bring this up because it has some features that you should be made aware of, such as keep lines together. Maybe I'm at the end of a page and I have a very long paragraph and I don't want that paragraph to be split. If I select that paragraph and apply keep lines together, that's just going to push it to the next page. You also have things like suppress line numbers and don't hyphenate. This window could be very valuable. If you don't see some of the line and paragraph spacing as well as indentation, you might need to pop this window out so that you can apply what you're looking to do. We'll click OK. This subdomain also tells us that we need to be able to apply built-in styles to text. So I'm going to go ahead and select my chapter one line. I'm on the home tab. I'm in the styles group. And in this section, I have some built-in styles that I can apply to this. Maybe I want to apply a heading one to that title. And as I'm going through, maybe I want to highlight this text and add the intense emphasis to this line. And notice it went ahead and it updated that text with those styles. Maybe I don't want this blue for the intense emphasis. Maybe I want green like what Peter Pan would wear. If I right click on this and select modify, it brings up the modify style window and I can change things like the font used and the font size. But over here, I can change this to that green I was talking about. And as you're making changes in this section, down here below the preview, it's telling you everything that's going on within this style. So that green that we change is listed here, but maybe I don't like that bold of a green. I want this light green. Notice it populated here. And as I change things like spacing or I go into the format and I start playing around in this, it will update here and tell me everything that's going on in this style. Let's go ahead and click OK. The final thing that this subdomain tells us that we need to be able to do is clear formatting. You know, after I applied that intense emphasis, I really don't like it. And as I scroll up through my document, I really don't like all of this that we applied. So let me go back to this section here. And if I select this text on the home tab in the font group, if I click this button here, clear all formatting, it went ahead and it removed all that color that I had applied, but notice that the lines change. Same thing here, if I select this text and click clear all formatting, it brings it back to what it was. We're on the third subdomain, create and configure document sections. The first thing that this subdomain tells us that we should be able to do is to format text in multiple columns. On the certification exam, if you get a question like this, most likely you're going to be told to put your cursor in a specific section before you apply something like this. And I'm kind of mingling some of the points in this subdomain, but I want to encourage you to use the show hide button. If you're not familiar with that, it's on the home tab. It's in the paragraph group. And what you want to do is click this backwards P. It's the show hide button. And what it does is it shows you some of the formatting that's going on in a document. If I told you to do whatever after the column break, you would know that my cursor needs to be over here because that's after the column break. To do multiple columns, you want to go to the layout tab. We're in the page setup group. We're going to click the column drop down. Now you have the option here for some built-in settings and that'll work. 
but I want to show you the more columns. Because in addition to some of the presets that you have, if we up this to two, notice that I can add a line between my columns and I can also control the spacing between the two columns. In addition to that, I also have the option of applying this to the whole document or from this point forward. We'll leave it for the whole document for this and we'll click OK. And we can see those settings applied. I'm going to undo what I've done here by hitting Control Z on my keyboard. The next thing that we're told that we should be able to do is to insert page, section, and column breaks. We're still on the layout tab and we're in the page setup group. We're going to click the breaks drop down. You should be familiar with the different breaks that are in this section. The great thing is not only does it tell you the different breaks, but it gives you a definition for what each break does. The first thing that we're told is we should be able to do a page break. So we can just click here and notice everything got dropped down to another page. And because we have that show hide button, we can see where that break is. I'll undo what I've done. I'm going to put my cursor here before chapter one. I'm going to go back to page setup. And in our breaks, we're going to click new page. This is going to be important because we're going to do a few things. The last thing it tells us that we should be able to do is to change page setup options for a section. Remember earlier when we applied columns to this document and it did it to the entire document? And I had mentioned that in something like that, you're probably going to have to put it after a specific section. Well, let's look at doing that. I'm going to put my cursor here in chapter one's heading. On the page setup group, I'm going to click columns and we'll do this again. We'll do two. I like that line between and we'll click OK. And it went ahead and applied that to chapter one. But if I scroll up, Notice that my formatting before that section break stayed the same. Let's look at doing this with something else. If I click in this first section and I click page setup, I'm on the layout tab. Maybe I don't want that vertical alignment to be top. Maybe I want it to be center. So if I change that, notice it dropped everything down. And just to show you that it didn't do it to the end, notice that I have some spacing at the end. Had that applied it to everything in this document, this would have been pushed down this whole column so that there was an even amount of space between the top and the bottom. This section is not too difficult to carry out, but one of the key things for this is using the show hide button. That way you can see where your cursor needs to be, that you're applying things in the right spots, and that you're not adding too many things like breaks in your document. Because I've seen students add five different section breaks to the same section and not realize it because they did not use that show hide button. I would encourage you for this exam, that button's going to be essential to carry out tasks like this. Mm -hmm.